Okay, so this is going to be a video on the installation of the Badger Ordnance Slick H system onto a Spotter 60 spotting scope. Importantly, this installation will include the new cat eye or spotter protective filter as Badger calls it. Uh, this will, using this will change how you can, will limit how you can install the rest of the system. Uh, I will address that at the beginning uh, for those of you who are going to install one of these and don't want to have to reassemble or disassemble and reassemble the, th the entire thing like I had to do, which is why I'm making this video. <clears throat> so the system comes in this box, the main system, and then separately the cat eye comes in this box. Here are your part numbers. The color of the, uh, of the system is like a dark bronze. It's not flat dark earth. It's definitely not black. It may look black on the screen, but it's not. It's a very nice bronze. Everything looks well built like you'd expect from Badger, especially this piece. Um, very nicely, very nicely made. This is a little tight. I'm going to have to loosen it up, but um, this side is nice and easy. So, uh, <clears throat> why what chain well and there is one other piece that i'm not showing you and it's this ring that goes around the optic itself i i don't have this separated because it's a very tight fit and i actually lubed the optic with just a little bit of this juice to get it on the the go juice that is uh to get it on so I didn't scratch it when I had to rotate it. Um, this ring is the most important part of this whole system and the instructions that we'll take a look at are insufficient <clears throat> or maybe even incorrect. So, it, and it all has to do with where this split goes. Um, but when you install this ring, it, or when you receive the ring, it will come with a screw in it and you'll remove that screw. My recommendation is to put this ring on the very first step. Uh, that's the very first thing you need to do and pay attention to where this split is. The instructions show that split on the opposite side of the optic that shows it right here and I have it on the opposite side. The reason is because if you're going to have the cat eye, there's only one flat section on the cat eye. The rest of it's perfectly round. And when you have it all assembled, that flat section must be at the very bottom, kind of like this. So that means it has to mount and this piece has to mount right here. It cannot mount over here, which is how I initially had the ring split over here. And then I tried to mount it here and it just doesn't work the way this is manufactured. And this has to be over here. Uh, so that, that flat sp uh, section is at the very bottom center. Um, with that said, um, the other thing about the instructions that is incorrect is, well, there's two other things that are incorrect. One is sort of insignificant. It says to remove the, the screws that are in your, that come standard from Hensel are Torx 20s, but they're actually 25s. At least mine were Torx 25s. And when you remove them, you be sure to remove the rubber bushings as well. You do not leave the rubber bushings on. I thought you might, but you do not. There's no way to leave them on, even back here. So you probably never use them again, but put them in a bag, <laughs> set them off to the side. Uh, the, the other part that is very importantly incorrect is in the order, uh, it says tighten the screws in this order. And it tells you to tighten the screw, which is the ring screw O after you've loosely attached the accessory rails. So what that's saying is get these side rails on like this. But once you do that, 
you have that rail in there, you cannot get anything torque wise into that side. So you have to do that, that first. So what I'm going to do in this assembly is I'm going to, I have the ring on, I'm going to get the bottom rail on, I'm going to get the top rail on, I'm going to get the, the right side rail on, and that will position this ring where it needs to be. Then I'm going to tighten the ring, and then I'm going to put this this side, this rail on. That's the way it has to go. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to, to get to this screw. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, one other note is that every screw except for one will be torqued to 20 to 25 inch pounds. I have a torque limiter here. It's 25. It calls for one screw to be at 50 inch pounds max. So I have a 45 inch pound, well, that's 15. Um, I have a 45 inch pound torque limiter here. We'll use that for that. Um, 530 seconds all the way around. Every screw is 530 seconds, except for that one, which will need to be adjusted later on. And that may not be the case for yours. So let's get going. Uh, we're gonna start with the bottom. Oh, this is the rail grabber. We'll maybe talk about this later. Uh, it will go like this. I'm not going to install this. Um, my system, it will go on the bottom of, well, where will it go? It'll go on the bottom rail and allow you to use a uh, an Arca plate. So, but I'm not gonna do that. So you may, I'm gonna set these off to the sides so they don't get in the way, but that's what those are. Um, Okay, so we're going to follow the instructions accordingly. I've removed the screws. Uh, I've installed, uh, it says to install the main riser assembly, which is this, to the bottom rail. Uh, so and that will go like this. So this is the one screw that it calls for 45 inch pounds, but like we'll start with the lower and then we'll work up from there. Okay, so that's just gonna be tight like that. And these screws do come in a package all separated by thread pitch and length, and there's a matching system here, or a matching diagram, where you can match them up. Because I've already done this before, they're already sort of pulled out. So then this will go, <clears throat> excuse me, onto this bottom section and everything will have index all of these anything that attaches to the ring will have these sort of fittings that will match into this so you may see me sort of finagle them a little bit sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling to get them in but they do fit nice and tight uh, this i may have mentioned this already i don't recall but the cover is from triad tactical uh, it is compatible with this. It just takes a little bit of finagling. So um, we'll get that as tight as we can around there. And then we'll go ahead and fit this. This piece is, tends to be the most difficult one of all of them. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fit it into the fitting up front to go in. Making sure that none, none of the cover is impinging. Okay. And you may have to sort of adjust the ring. The ring, I'll show you in just a second, stands proud of the end of the lens. Sorry about that. It stands proud by the end of the lens just a little more than an eighth of an inch. Uh, and that is because, well, it works out so that the cat eye will fit over and sort of recess in, I think. Um, it is important to me, and it probably should be to you, that there is no torquing of the optic to get this system fitted. Uh, I want everything to, all the screws to drop into their respective slots 
so that it's not torquing anything when I put the screw in. So we're going to aim for that goal. So there's no tension. I'm not putting any tension on with my hand. Just... There we go. Okay, just, just snug. Not torquing anything down at this point. Now we'll go to the top. The difference between the side rails and the top rails is only the length of the middle, the standoff or the shoulder. The one for the top is longer than the ones for the side. And the longer end goes in the back. That'll be obvious when you go to fit these in. So said I'm going to have to manipulate the cover just a little bit with my punch being careful not to damage the what did I do with my punch there it is being careful not to damage the optic itself all you have to really do is kind of pull it away a little bit and it'll fit right Steven at triad is probably yelling at me right now if he ever watches this but and so I kind of hold it with my thumb here and then I'm, I'll probably will dump out these screws because they tend to get, you don't need to have them, but you need to know where they are. So, and then I take the back end and I use the back to kind of pull forward and then I get it settled. And once I kind of have it mostly in position, then I grab that punch and I pull it. Again, being careful not to damage the... I mean, it's rubber-coated, but you don't want to damage it too badly. As I make scraping noises. So what I might actually do for this one... Okay. Okay, there we go. So we are in... Pull it up and around. Pull it up and around. Pull up and around. Okay, we, that one is good. Nice and clear. Drop that in. Drop that in. And drop that in. I will show you one thing I forgot to mention about something I'm not certain about. I may look to find a replacement but on the back screws on all three of these rails being by three I mean tops and sides there's not a lot of thread to catch it's probably technically sufficient especially since there's so much in the middle but I would like another thread thread and a half um I may talk to Badger about that when I'm telling them that their instructions are, aren't, aren't as good as they should be. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do this side rail. Same approach, dump out the screws. And the screws, again, are, are designated on... So it's K-I-O for the sides and L-J-O for the... Um, top.
that's how that's supposed to go like that. That was nice and easy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, I'm going to do the middle one. Just a thread or two. And then I'm going to make sure that that cover is out of the way entirely. It looks like it is just off the bat. That one's clear. It's clear now. All right. Maybe a plastic tool would be better than that metal punch, but the metal punch has been working for me, so. Oops, it's off. Something is not right there. But that is an O, so. That is incorrect. Let's Loosen these back up. Yeah, it looks right. Well, another mystery for me here. There's an O. Triple check, but that is an O. It starts just fine, and these are all supposed to be the same. I wonder if there's just a little bit of a burr. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Maybe a little extra Cerakote. And it goes into all of the other ones just fine, so... Everything's good. Just a little extra Cerakote down in the slot, I expect. But you don't want to mess around with a system like this and be wrong. I can see that it's clear of the middle there and double check it, scoop it out. 
it's clear there. It's clear there as well, okay? Now for screw O, well, we'll go to the back first. Okay, tight, snug rather. Okay. Now, we will get this one to where actually what we will do, we'll go in the order that it says to. So, well, we'll go, we won't go in the order it says to. We'll go in the order that it says to within the bounds that we are given. So main screw R, 20 to 25 inch pounds. That's this one here in the bottom that we've installed. Go ahead and that's 25. And while we're here, <laughs> that's not going to work. We'll go ahead and hit this one with 45 inch pounds. Okay, we are we're now done with that limiter. Everything else is going to be 25. So go ahead and get this one in. Actually, yep. That is the one we need next. So I probably will be able to get my torque limiter in here somehow. says do not tighten till slot closes in bold so i don't know so i think what it's saying is don't tighten it fully down to where it's completely closed so i'm not going to do that i can still see you may not be able to but i can still see a gap in there at that level and I am comfortable that is not going to come out Let's kind of give it a feel I bet that's 15 yeah so we're at least at 15 pounds and it says 20 to 25 inch pounds max I'm gonna leave it there there's still a gap I can see through it and so we're in compliance with the instructions. Uh, and we didn't even go to 25 pounds, 25 inch pounds. All right, so that is now, that screw is now tight. I'm going to go ahead and install the side rail. Uh, Now I'm going to install the side rail. Perfect. Good purchase, good purchase. And Okay. Yeah, one thing I maybe had mentioned, I forget, this stands a little proud of its countersunk hole. I don't know why that is. It's on all three. Um, there's no other option. It doesn't. I don't think it affects anything. I just wonder why they used 
and it, it doesn't stand proud of the rail. It just stands proud of their countersunk hull, but I'm sure there's something about it I don't understand. Okay, so these are just snug at this point. Um, now we'll go ahead and go through the rest of the, the instructions uh, to follow it uh, in the order that they say to. So we've already done main screw R, and we've done the ring screw O. Accessory rails, 20 to 25, it, so it, it wants us to do the, the O's and the accessory rails. So these three here, top, top and sides. So we'll go ahead and do, I did one already, just I wanted it to be set in the right position. So basic rule right here, right for these part, uh, the, the top and the sides rail, side rails are front to back. So, the I, J, K, and L, it says, hit those next. All right, we are tight. One screw I'm gonna check to make sure I can't get a torque limiter down in there, but I'm going to double oh, see. The screw's not even in there. I missed that when I took it all apart. So hopefully it fits right in. And it does. Okay, perfect. So I'm not going to over tighten that. I'm just going to give it a little bit of snugness. Um, this tool that they provide you with does not work well in this hole, which is why I'm using this one. Um, it fits in, it'll probably be okay, but it won't spin without rubbing against this. So find one of these and use that instead. So, okay. Uh, that is assembled, the main part, obviously minus the grabber rails, which are the rail grabber and the plate, which is optional. So with this assembled, I can put on the cat eye. The cat eye is has an index hole for to fit in the larger hole as opposed to these slots here. It also has the slots with the screw, obviously, but it has sort of a double indexing or triple indexing system here. So this just goes on. That spins freely. Just kind of find its position. Again, making sure not to cross thread anything. Finger tight. And now, uh, there we go. A good fit. covers the entire lens. All the way around. And I think, yeah, there's a spot here. I think that if you, you wanted to tighten it down a little bit more, it's gonna be a different torque or a different Allen key. too small. Yeah, that makes it more rigid. So you can find your sweet spot in how you want it to adjust. I think it looks good right there. You may play with that later on. But yeah, that's the system right there. Like I said very well built. Uh, why would you spend? I mean, 
there are other options out there. There aren't a lot of other options out there uh, to add night vision or, um, or if you want to do photography, Kadex has a system that's like two grand that is front to back is 2000 bucks and you can buy them in pieces. Uh, and it comes with a sort of a cage. Uh, this is much more low profile. Uh, and what I like about it especially is that if this were to be, if this were on a tripod and that tripod gets knocked off or knocked over, or the wind takes it, whatever, if something that the shearing force when this falls is not going to be on the optic itself, it's going to be on this bottom rail. And there is a story out there about somebody who had their tripod on with just the plate into the bottom of their optic. And when it fell, it split the bottom of the optic open. The optic itself was fine, but the mounting system was broken. Um, so trying to send the optic back to Europe, I'm sure would be a nightmare. So this will allow not only the night vision and the red dots on the side, um, but you can put this on a, with an adapter, you can put it on a plate, on an Arca plate system and do your thing with it. So that's why I chose this. Plus it's Badger and Badger always makes great stuff. Uh, their instructions need fixing, but, but they make great stuff. Um, and one other note though, I will say that for sure, if you're using the system and you don't have the cat eye, you will not be able to use your factory protective lens. So you'd have to find some other way or just not have a protective lens because there's no way that this is going to, well, I guess there's maybe a way, but I don't know. I don't think it would be a good way to have this sitting over it. So anyway, the cat eye lens is an, is an extra nice way to, to go about. You can either protect or limit how much light comes in or remove it all together. And plus it protects the lens at the same time. So there you go. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, do the things in the order that I recommend and your life will be easier. Uh, the leftover screws that you see here are for the rail grabber and the plate. So that is the, uh, which is here and that should be self-explanatory. I'm not going to cover that because I don't think I'm going to use it or at least not, not immediately. So good luck um, and enjoy your optic.